What was the first language you learned in school? And what was the first language you learned as a baby? Maybe you think first of English, maybe German, Italian. But how did you communicate before you were able to speak any of those languages? Maybe you can remember the moment when your mother was holding you in her arms, looking at you, and then she was, was just smiling at you. And how did you communicate back? It's like today, when I'm smiling at you, intentively, you are smiling back. So, the point is about communication before you even can communicate in one of your mother tongues. And this is the interesting thing. How many days, hours, weeks did you invest in learning a language? When you were at school, maybe you went abroad. And now you're perfect in different languages. And on the other side, what amount of time did you invest in learning this other language, which is body language? So maybe today is the time to reflect a bit about this. And I think you can take out of this little talk three things. First, what is body language? Second, how can you train yourself to recognize the body language of another person? And the third point, how can you use this for your personal leadership style? Maybe you think right now, what can someone who's working for the oldest global player to that topic? So you should know one thing out of my personal history. I lived for 15 years in a monastery. It was a the Cistercian is a type like the Benedictines. So we try at least not to talk so much during the day. Lunchtime and dinner time is always in silence. So we are a bit made in silence. And the interesting thing is now, nevertheless, you like to communicate with the other ones in the monastery. And so you learn to look at them and try to understand what do they feel when they are walking, standing, looking at you. And this was my time where I learned a bit more about body language. But why is it so important? Maybe you had already the possibility to prepare an important speech in front of your classmates, other students, in front of your employees. And you were thinking hardly, what should I talk about? And you were reflecting about the content of your message. But if you want to be a successful speaker, this is just 7%. Much more important is voice and tonality. How fast do you speak? Is it loud? Or do you try to reduce your voice a bit? And much more, 55% is about body language. And this is posture, gesture, and the most important, your eyes. Maybe you have seen that picture already. It was 2007 when the German chancellor visited the Russian president in Sochi, and he knew quite well that she has fear and she doesn't like dogs. And in front of the journalists of the world, when they were still in the room, by accident, a huge dog was coming in. And just look at her, her body language. Look at her feet, her knees, the legs, the hands, the shoulder, and the face. Years later, she said to this situation, as a brave chancellor, you have to deal with that dog. So it's up to you to uh, evolve your own style, how you, can, how you are able to understand your own body language. This is such a typical situation. Someone is walking at the campus of the university, 
and she knows where to go to the next lecture. And the other one, he's just interested in talking with her. He's opening his arms. It's a bit like a peacock, so to speak. And, but she's not interested in, she just is walking. And now it comes to yourself and your personal situation, maybe in the office. When you're sitting in the office and you hear someone in the morning coming, or maybe fast, maybe silently, you already can recognize in what mood is this person. Maybe you have already an idea, oh, something happened in the morning. So maybe it's a bit stressful right now, and I should go to him later on. So the style of walking helps you already to understand what's going on. And then maybe he's just passing by your office, looking in and standing there, and then just look how he stands, or she, it doesn't matter. Maybe a bit like this, or very self-confident, or, good morning. Maybe just, I'm convinced, but you can do the job. I have my hands in my pocket. Or maybe it's an open good morning. So the first thing is walking, then standing. And the next thing is sitting. Maybe you are passing the office of your boss, and he's sitting there like this. It's very familiar, but when you look at the leg, you can realize, no, this is my area, this red carpet is mine, don't enter into my area. Whereas, this is a bit more professional, but there's a little uncertainty. I don't know how to react to you. A bit more difficult is this one. Oh yeah, maybe I'm friendly, but he is a clear barrier. So you give already a clear signal to your, employee, to your employee or your colleague, how do you feel when he's coming into the office? But you can change your position. You can be open-minded. You can try to give him the possibility to talk with you in an open-minded situation. Now, that was walking, standing, sitting. Now, it's all about arms, and your face. This is quite a sign, oh, this is a hard situation. What should I do right now? I'm not sure. Oh, yes, I have to think about, but I can do it. I think I can do it. I have to give my brain a little massage that my little brain cells can work better. Mm. I don't want to talk about this now. Let's think about it once again. And always this, oh, what should I say next? I lost my idea what I want to present to you right now. Or those who are wearing glasses, and they have the glasses on, and they are just making, during the meeting, something like this. I have to look on the topic once again. I'm insecure. I don't know what to do. So it helps you already to read the thoughts before they are said to someone else. And now we are coming to the most important part of you, of us all. The face, the eyes, the mouth. And if someone, as you're asking a question in a, to your students and someone looks at you like this, you're not really sure, oh, did she understand my question? Does she believe me, what I'm saying? Or look at her hands, she tries to protect them under the table? Or take just laughing? You have those two different possibilities to laugh to somebody. With your muscles? That's quite obvious. Is it really a love which comes from your heart. Or you can use your wrinkles. When you look in a laughing face and you see here the wrinkles, I know many of us, we don't like those wrinkles, but then you know it's a real type of laughing. For some of us, we did something wrong and someone reveals it, 
and we're looking a bit like this, ooh, now it becomes obvious. Why haven't I said it before to my colleague or my boss that I made a big mistake? So this is now the important point for you. We have seen all those different types of nonverbal communication of your body language. And it's up to you to bring you in a situation where you can look from above like a little helicopter. And you can look at yourself and the other persons. And this is the wonderful thing. When you're coming in and, and into the lecture hall and you're looking at the faces of all your students, you immediately can interpret what was happening the night before or in what mood are they right now. And it's the same thing for you as a professional. You're coming into the meeting room and you have the possibility to react directly on those nonverbal communication signs. It was Amy Cuddy from Harvard University. Uh, she said there are two questions we immediately try to answer when someone new is coming into the room. Do I trust the person? And do I respect the person? And those two questions will be answered immediately by you. Do I trust him? Do I respect him? And therefore, in the first seven seconds, when you're meeting a new person, you decide already whether you respect or you trust, and maybe you trust the person. And therefore, in business, it's so important to learn about, more about body language because it helps you to guide your employees, your colleagues, and also your boss in a better way because it's like in a coaching situation. When someone is coming in, you can re try to read already the, the faces or the face of the person, and so you are always a few seconds ahead of the verbal argument what will come next. And so it gives you the possibility, maybe through a certain openness, which can be demonstrated also by your hands, where you say, it's a peacock? No. It's, oh, we have to bargain a bit. Or we are willing to find a good solution. And the starting point to learn more about this is not tomorrow, it's today. Just use the next break. It's like learning a new language. You have your language cards with the German and the Danish word on the other side, and then you learn it at least seven times that you can remember the word. And this is the same with body language. So when you are outside later on, when you're looking to your person on your right to left, try to understand how does he sit, what does he maybe feel, what does he think. And step by step, you will be able, when you're learning more about your own expression in body language, also to interpret the body language of other persons. And this is my wish for you. Start with this today. Good luck, and thank you very much for your attention.